Hi everyone, welcome back. We're now going to cover general techniques for solving non-homogeneous recurrence relations. Now, these techniques will work for first order, second order, and higher order linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients, whether they're homogeneous or non-homogeneous. We've in fact already looked at how to solve them in the homogeneous case, that is through the characteristic polynomial and finding the roots. Now we'll extend that and see how to solve them in the non-homogeneous case. So just a reminder that the equations we're looking at are equations of this form. For example, this is a first order recurrence relation, which is linear and con with constant coefficients. This is our second order recurrence relation. And now we're focused on the situation where we've got this term f of n, so this function of n, which is not zero. So this is the non-homogeneous case. How we solve these ones is we also look at the associated homogeneous relation. So we're going to solve the non-homogeneous by also considering the homogeneous equations. And so that is we take this non-zero term, uh, often referred to as a forcing function. So we got this non-zero function of n and we just zero it out. So we zero it out down here, and that's the corresponding homogeneous equation. We know how to solve those already. That was last lecture, looking at the characteristic polynomials and finding the roots of that, and then using powers of those as our solutions. Now we'll see how to deal with the non-homogeneous case. So a few bits of terminology. A particular solution is a single sequence x sub n, which satisfies the recurrence relation. So we denote that by x sub n with a little superscript of a p, p for particular. And this is just some solution, any single solution to the recurrence relation. We find it any way we can. So that's one key ingredient to solving the general recurrence relation, is we first find a single solution to it. Then we also have this term called the general solution, and it is the set of all sequences x sub n that satisfy the recurrence relation. That's the general solution. So it's any solution to the recurrence relation has to be of that general form. And we'll see where these come into practice in a particular example. However, before we get into that particular example, we will say how the particular and the general solution come together. So the general solution to a non-homogeneous recurrence relation this is the thing we are interested in. We've got a non-homogeneous recurrence relation. We want to try to find the general solution. How do we do that? Well, first we find one particular solution, x sub n superscript p. So some particular solution. Find it any way we can. Also, we'll find a general solution to the homogeneous equation that we've done last lecture. And if we add those two together, then we get a general solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So we got our homogeneous general solution. That will involve some constants. We've got our particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. And the sum of these is the general solution to the non-homogeneous equation. That might be a lot to take in, but not to worry. We'll do some examples, which will solidify this. So here's our first example. We've got a first order non-homogeneous recurrence relation. It also can be written in this form just by moving the x sub n minus 1 term over. So here we see it's a first order linear recurrence relation with constant coefficients. It's non-homogeneous because it's got that forcing function 3 to the power n on the right hand side. And we'd like to find the solution to this given this initial condition. So the way we do this is first we find the general solution to the homogeneous equation. So that's our first step. Let's go ahead and find the general solution to the homogeneous equation. The homogeneous equation is obtained just by zeroing it out. So there's our homogeneous equation. Let's find the general solution. Well, we know the general solution to an equation like this. We know that 
there's a, I mean, we could appeal to the characteristic polynomial if we wanted to do it that way, or we can just go way back to where we first started looking at solutions to homogeneous equations and see that this is really just saying xn is 6 times the previous term, and so we know that the solution is 6 to the power of n. So one way to do that is to just appeal to a previous one, a previous result that we already knew, and you're free to do that. Um, we could also do the characteristic equation approach, and maybe I'll do it here just to see that this works for our linear, uh, first order linear uh, recurrence relations, um, not just second order. So what would our characteristic equation be? It would be r minus 6 equals 0, and so that tells us that r is equal to 6. So our general solution to the homogeneous equation is that r value raised to the power of n, so it's 6 to the power of n, and then it's a constant out front, so any multiple of that is a solution. So we'll put that constant out front as c. And this is for any real number c. So there we go, we found our general solution to the homogeneous equation. Now we want to find a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So that's our next step. How do we do that? Well, here we're going to use a method known as the method of undetermined coefficients. So I'll write it down here, method of undetermined coefficients. And this is just a fancy way of saying we guess what the solution should be and put a constant in front of it to allow us some flexibility to get the solution. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that if we look at our recurrence relation, I see that I have to have x sub n minus 6 sub x sub n minus 1. So some combination of the x sub n's have to produce a 3 to the power of n. Oh, so that means that maybe I will guess, so this is my guess, had a solution. My guess is that a particular solution is going to be of the form 3 to the power of n. That's just my guess. Like it's, I've got to have a combination of x sub n and x sub n minus 1 that result in a 3 to the power of n. So I'm guessing that the solution must be of this form, 3 to the power of n. I don't want to be too strict here, so I will put a coefficient of k in front to allow me the extra flexibility to figure out a particular solution. That sort of absorbs any issues that I may have in forcing 3 to the n to be a solution. Maybe it's a multiple of 3 to the n that actually is the solution. So that's the undetermined coefficient part. So I guess what is the form of the solution? That's 3 to the n. And I put an undetermined coefficient in front, something that hasn't been determined yet, but I will determine now. So that's my guess. So now we plug in and solve for k. Now remember, where are we plugging it in? We're trying to get a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So that's where we're going to plug it into. We plug it into the non-homogeneous equation. So I'm plugging uh, k3 to the power of n in. Again, let's focus in on this is the non-homogeneous equation I'm plugging things into. So I've got it in there for x sub n. Now I'm plugging it in for x sub n minus 1. So there it is, and then the right-hand side is 3 to the n. So there, I've plugged it into the equation. So if I have any hope of this being a solution to the non-homogeneous equation, then it must satisfy this equation I've written down. Notice there's a 3 to the power of n minus 1. That's a factor of everything there. So I can factor it out. It leaves me with a 3 in the first one. It leaves me with a 6k in the second one. And it leaves me with a 3 in the third one. So now I've got a linear equation that k must satisfy. So I've got negative 3k has to equal 3. Or in other words, k has to be negative 1. And so there we go. We found what that undetermined coefficient is. So what have we found? We found that a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation is negative 3 to the power of n. So remember 
what I said when we were talking about this result. I said we're trying to find a general solution to the non-homogeneous equation. The way we do that is we find the general solution to the homogeneous equation and we find a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation by any means we can. We just find one solution. I just need one. That's it. Because then I can get the form of all of them by adding these two together. So this is just any solution I can get my hands on. If I have to guess and check, then I'm going to do that. And that's what the method of undetermined coefficients is. You guess at what a particular solution looks like, and you check to see what the value of the coefficient is to make it a solution. So we found our particular solution. We've also got our homogeneous solution. So this theorem says that the general solution to the non-homogeneous recurrence relation is as follows. It is the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. So it's the sum of those previous two solutions. That's what the theorem says up above. So the homogeneous solution is c times 6 to the n and the particular solution is, oh I was about to write a plus, but it's a minus 3 to the n. And so there is our general solution to the non-homogeneous recurrence relation. Now I want the solution which satisfies the initial conditions. So what were the initial conditions? Well, we'll scroll back up and we'll see. So x sub 0 has to be 7. So that's our initial condition. We want x sub 0 to be 7. So we plug n equals 0 into our general solution that we found. So that's c times 6 to the 0 minus 3 to the 0. That's got to be 7. So that gives us c minus 1 is equal to 7 or c is equal to 8. So again what have we done? We have found our general solution to the non-homogeneous recurrence relation. This has a constant c in it. That constant c is going to be determined by the initial condition. So this is the solution for the recurrence relation, but not the given initial condition yet. So our initial condition is that we wanted the sequence to start at 7, so we get to choose c so that the sequence starts at 7. And that tells us that c has to be 8, and so therefore the solution to the sometimes denoted as IVP, initial value problem, so the recurrence relation with the initial value. So the solution to the initial value problem is x sub n is equal to 8 times 6 to the n minus 3 to the n. And does this give us what we wanted? Well, it satisfies our recurrence relation through our calculations. We've got that it satisfies our recurrence relation. Does it satisfy the initial condition? Um, it certainly does because if I plug in 0 in I get 8 minus 1 which is 7. And so there is our solution. So we'll put a double box around that. That's our solution. So again let's recap. What did we do to get our solution? This is our general method for solving linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients that are non-homogeneous. The way we do it is we first convert to the homogeneous equation, solve that one, that gives us our homogeneous solution. There we can use techniques from last lecture, which are things like characteristic polynomials, finding roots, etc. So we got our homogeneous solution, then we go ahead and by any means necessary find a particular solution. Here we use the method of undetermined coefficients by guessing at what a solution had the form of and then figuring out the value of the constant coefficient which made it a solution. Then we put those two together, summed them up. That gives us our general solution to the non-homogeneous equation. There will necessarily be some constants there. These constants are coming from the general solution to the homogeneous equation. 
So if it's first order, there'll be one constant. If there's second order, there'll be two constants, and so on. So we've got our constants. And then we figure out the value of these constants by using the initial conditions to figure out what that constant has to be. Here it was first order, so one constant, one initial condition to determine it. And then we've got our solution. So let's go ahead and do another example. So we've got a second order recurrence relation and it's non-homogeneous because again we've got this non-zero term. We've got a couple of initial conditions, second order, two initial conditions. Let's solve it. And we're going to use the same technique. So the first thing we're going to do is find the general solution to the homogeneous equation. The homogeneous equation is x sub n minus 4 x sub n minus 1 plus 3 x sub n minus 2 is equal to 0. We're going to use our method of characteristic polynomials. So I'm going to write down, maybe I'll say the characteristic poly. And that's r squared minus 4r plus 3 is equal to 0. Now I just need to find the roots of this degree 2 polynomial. Here I can factor it. It factors as r minus 3, r minus 1 is equal to 0, so r is equal to 1 and 3. So there's our two roots, and so that means our general homogeneous solution, so x sub n with a superscript of h for homogeneous, is c times 1 to the power of n plus d times 3 to the power of n. But since 1 to the power of n is just 1, we can write this more simply as a c plus d times 3 to the power of n. And so there is our general homogeneous solution. Now we find the particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So particular solution to non-homogeneous equation. And for this, we use again the method of undetermined coefficients. So I'll jot that down again. Method of undetermined coefficients. And again, that's just a way of saying guess at a solution. And figure out what the value of the coefficient has to be in order for it to be a solution. So what is our guess? Well, our guess at a solution is we look at the right-hand side, or that forcing function, f of n. We see it's 2 to the power of something. So it's an exponential function of base 2. And if I think about the left-hand side, if x sub n is some power of 2, then so will x sub n minus 1 and x sub n minus 2. These would all be some powers of 2 and some combination of them. Hopefully, if I get the coefficient right, will be a power of 2. And so that's going to be my guess. I'm going to hope that there is a solution of the form x sub n, and then I'll call it superscript p for a particular solution. I'm going to guess that it's of the form some constant times 2 to the power of n. And let's plug in and check. Plug in and check. So when we plug it in, we get k times 2 to the power of n minus 4, k times 2 to the n minus 1, plus 3k 2 to the n minus 2 is equal to 2 to the n minus 2. And you might be saying, you know, does this always work? Well, think about what we're going to be doing in the next step. We're just going to cancel out all of the powers of 2 that are in common between every term. And then that just reduces down to a linear equation in k, which will have a solution. So we can always find a solution here. We'll mention after uh, these first few examples and the method in general, so at the end of this lecture, we'll look at examples where we might have to make some slight modifications to our guess based on what the form of the homogeneous equation was. But in general, yeah, these techniques will work. So maybe I'll briefly even say, if 
2 to the n actually showed up as a solution to the homogeneous equation above. Above we had solutions 1 to the n and 3 to the n, so 2 to the n wasn't a solution to the homogeneous, but if it was, then I'd have no reason to expect it to be a solution to the non-homogeneous equation because it would probably get wiped out. I mean, I already know it's a solution to the homogeneous equation, so plugging it into the left-hand side would give me a 0 and not a 2 to the n. So those are the settled things that we'd have to watch out for. But right now I look and I say 2 to the n. Nope, didn't satisfy the homogeneous equation. Only 1 to the n and 3 to the n did. So I have a good chance of this working out. In other words, I have a good chance of the k term surviving on this last line I wrote down so that I could solve for k. So here I'm going to factor out the 2 to the n minus 2 from everything. So just divide 2 to the n minus 2 to both sides. What that leaves me with is a 2 squared over here, which is a 4k. It also leaves me with a 2 in, uh, at the back end of the 4k. So I got 4k times another 2, so this is a minus an 8k. And then I've also got a 3k is equal to 1. So again, what did I do to get from there to there? I divided by 2 to the n minus 2 all the way through. That's what I did. And so now I've got this 4k plus 3k is 7k minus 8k. That's negative k is equal to 1. The k has survived. That's why this method's going to work, because the k survived and I can solve for it. k is equal to negative 1. And therefore, we have our particular solution. It's negative 2 to the n. By any means necessary, find a particular solution, and we have found one. So now we're going to take our particular solution and our general homogeneous solution and write down our general non-homogeneous solution. So general solution to non-homogeneous equation. That's going to be x sub n is equal to x sub n h plus x sub n p, homogeneous plus particular solution, and that is, well, I might have scrolled up too far, there it is, our homogeneous is c plus d times 3 to the n, plus our particular solution, which actually is a minus 2 to the n. And there we go. We have found our general solution to our non-homogeneous recurrence relation. And we've got the two constants there, c and d, and those can be determined by the initial values. So now we go ahead and use the initial values to figure out what c and d are. What are our initial values? Let's scroll back up. x0 is 5, x1 is 6. So x0 is 5, x1 is 6. So when we use our general form up above and plug n equals 0 in, I get a c plus d minus 1 is equal to 5, and we get a c plus 3d minus 2 is equal to 6. So this is a c plus d is equal to 6, and a c plus 3d is equal to 8. And so now I've got a system of two equations in two unknowns. They are linear equations, so we can go ahead and solve them. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the method of elimination. So I will take negative the first equation and add it to the second equation. So I'll write down my first equation, and I will take negative it and add it to the second one. So I get negative c plus c is 0, negative d plus 3d is 2d, and negative 6 plus 8 is 2. And so that gives me c plus d is equal to 6, and d is equal to 1. And so those have a solution of c is equal to, d is equal to 1, and c is equal to 5. So we've got our values of our coefficients, and therefore our solution to the initial value problem, so the recurrence relation plus its initial values, is x sub n is equal to 5 plus 3 to the n minus 2 to the n. And there we go. We have found our solution to our recurrence relation. Now before we get to the general statement of this method, which I want to just talk about the general statement of what the method is we've just done for these last two examples, and then do one more example using that general method. 
before we get to that, I just want to show you that you can check your work. You can check the solution to these recurrence relations. So if you go to Wolfram Alpha, so that's wolframalpha.com, we can enter our recurrence relations in. And I'll show you how to do that. Now we'll do it for both of them. And I'll start with that first order recurrence relation. It was x, and then we can use a square bracket, xn, and then we have that minus 6 x n minus 1. Again, I'm putting the subscripts in square brackets, and that's equal to 3 to the power of n. And we had an initial condition x0 is equal to 7. So there's a comma there. Maybe I should put a space in there just so we don't get that little red line, which makes it harder to read. So there we go. I've entered our first order recurrence relation in with its initial condition, and I hit enter. And what we get is the solution. We see that the solution is 3 to the power of n, 2 to the power of n plus 3 minus 1. What did we get as a solution? We got 8 times 6 to the n minus 3 to the n. So we can see the minus 3 to the n. And if we look closely, we see that the first term, when we expand the 3 to the n across, we get a 3 to the n times 2 to the n plus 3. But that's really just 8 times 6 to the n. So it's just another version or another form of the solution that we obtain. They are equivalent to each other. Let's go ahead and look at the next recurrence relation. So that was our second order recurrence relation. So it was minus, and so x sub n minus 4 times x sub n minus 1 plus 3 times x sub n minus 2 is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 2. And we had an initial condition x sub 0 is 5, and x sub 1 is 6. And we can execute, so I hit enter, and we can see the solution presented there. So recurrence equation solution, negative 2 to the power of n plus 3 to the power of n plus 5. And that is exactly what we had. They, in, in the form that they've written it in, they've listed the particular solution first, that was the negative 2 to the n, and then the uh, homogeneous solution second, 3 to the power of n plus 5. So there's how you could check your solutions to make sure you didn't make any errors. You know, there's no need to have a back of the book for example, to check your solutions, because you can check your solutions using tools like Wolfram Alpha. So let's go ahead and look at the method written out in general form. So here's what we've done on the last two examples, and this is our general method. So we're interested in solving either a first order non-homogeneous or a second order non-homogeneous recurrence relation. To be specific, these are linear with constant coefficients. So we focus our attention on this forcing function. If it's of this form, so if it's an exponential function, some multiple of r to the power of n, then that's going to indicate how we make our guess. If that r is not a root of the characteristic polynomial, then we make that our guess for the particular solution, just like in the last few examples. We made a guess that our particular solution has that form. 2 to the power of n, or something like that, depending on what the value of r was. However, if r is a root of the characteristic polynomial, it could be a multiple root. If it's a degree 2 polynomial, it could be a double root. Or it could be, if we're looking at higher order recurrence relations, so our polynomial is degree 3 or degree 4, this particular root could have a multiplicity, could be a root multiple times. In other words, x minus r to the power of m divides the polynomial. So if it's a root, then it means there's no way it's a solution to the non-homogeneous equation because it already solves the homogeneous equation. In fact, 
we've already dealt with multiple roots as well, that if we had a root of multiplicity 2, say the second order case, the, the second order recurrence relation case where we had a root which was a multiplicity 2 root of the characteristic polynomial, remember we said that the homogeneous solution is that r to the n, we needed another solution, so we took n times r to the n. And those were solutions to the homogeneous equation. So that means we don't even expect an n times r to the n to be a solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So what we do is we just keep bumping up that n until we get that n high enough. So n to the power of the multiplicity, and we stick that in front of r to the n. And then that becomes our guess at our particular solution. So the idea here being is we already know r to the n, n times r to the n, n squared times r to the n, and so on, all the way up to n to the m minus 1 r to the n are already solutions to the homogeneous equation. So you just push the exponent on n high enough to get something that's not a solution to the homogeneous equation. And therefore, you guess that as the solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So that's what our guess is for our particular solution. So that's the two cases when we're dealing with an exponential function. What about if we're dealing with a power function? So f of n is some n to the power of d. So in other words, it's some polynomial of degree d. What we do is we make a guess that our particular solution is a polynomial of degree d. However, if some power of n is already a solution to the homogeneous equation, we just bump up all the powers in our polynomial enough so that we avoid those homogeneous solutions. So that's what this next statement is saying. It says take n to the power of t, and you know if that's a solution to the homogeneous equation, then just bump up the other ones. So in other words, make your solution of the form some n to the s times some polynomial of degree d. We'll see examples of this. But if you want to have a, a more thorough read through these ideas, you can have a look at Grimaldi. He goes through all these cases with some examples as well. But let's do an example. So we're going to find a particular solution to this equation. So again, nothing's changed here. We've done two examples like this already. We're going to continue to do the example in the same way. It's just that there may be some things along the way where decisions have to get made. And we're just going to walk through how we make those decisions. So what do we do first? We work on the general solution to the homogeneous equation. So what's our general solution to the homogeneous equation? The homogeneous equation is x sub n minus 3 x sub n minus 1 plus 2 x sub n minus 2 is equal to 0. Go ahead and we write down our characteristic polynomial. That's r squared minus 3r plus 2 is equal to 0. Does that factor? Worst case scenario, use the quadratic formula if we don't spot the factors right away. But it looks like, yeah, we can spot the factors r minus 1, r minus 2. So now this means that r is equal to 1 or 2. So what's our general solution to our homogeneous equation? It is c times 1 to the power of n, but 1 to the power of n is just 1, so I'll write it as just c plus d times 2 to the power of n. So there's our homogeneous solution. Now the key thing to observe here is that a constant, or we can think of it as just 1, is a solution to the homogeneous equation, and 2 to the n is a solution to the homogeneous equation. So worth noting here that we will note solutions to homogeneous equation are, when well, we don't really have to note these things because they are already staring at us from this boxed formula, but I do just want to draw your attention to this. We have 1 is a solution and 2 to the n is a solution. And the reason I'm noting these is for our decision making that comes next. Now we're going to go for our particular solution. So particular solution to non-homogeneous equation. Okay, so what do we focus on here? Well, here we're looking at our forcing function. 
that is 4 to the n. So we note that f of n is 4 to the n in this case. So in other words, it's a linear polynomial. What do I guess as my solution to the non-homogeneous recurrence relation? Well, I need to guess something so that when I plug it in here and here and here and work them all out, that it boils down to 4 to the n. So what that means is I'm going to guess it's a linear polynomial. So I'm going to write this down as my first guess. My first guess is that the particular solution has the form of a linear polynomial. So it's some k1 n plus k0. And now I just have to think, is that a good guess? Well, what's going to determine whether it's a good guess or not? Well, it's really a matter of, are either of these already solutions to the homogeneous equation? And the answer is yes, this one already is. That's just a constant. And I already know 1 is a solution to the homogeneous equation. So any constant times 1 is a solution to the homogeneous equation. That's what's so showing right here. So it's already a solution to the homogeneous equation. So it's not going to help me by making that as a guess to the particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation, because it's just going to zero out when I plug it into the left-hand side of the occurrence relation. It's never going to give me anything that contributes to 4 to the n, because it's just going to evaluate to 0 when I plug it in. So that means I don't make that my guess. This is the problem. It's already a homogeneous solution. So then my next guess, I won't even say next guess, because this is the kind of thing you'll just want to think about and say, no, I'm not going to make that my guess. So my guess is, so I wrote that down for, for the benefit of just the thought process that goes into it. But when you're doing this in practice, you just go, okay, what's my guess? Is it a linear polynomial? No, it can't be because the constant is already a solution to the homogeneous equation. So what is my particular solution going to be? Well, I would have liked to have guessed linear polynomial. But I'm just going to have to scale it by enough powers of n to eliminate the constant term. So in other words, I will scale both by an n. So I get an n squared plus a k naught times n. And there is my particular solution. So that's what I'm going to take as my guess. This is what this entire paragraph is telling us to do. So that's what it's telling us to do. It's saying, take your original guess, you know, your, what you thought should be a linear polynomial, that's the f of n, and power it up by an n so that you don't have any terms that are already solutions to the homogeneous equation. So there's our guess. And so now what do we do with our guess? We plug in to the recurrence relation, and we solve for any constants. So in this case, the constants are k1 and k0. So when we plug it into our recurrence relation, we get k1 n squared plus k0 n. I'll put parentheses around here just to focus our attention. Minus 3 times x sub n minus 1. So that's k sub 1 n minus 1 squared plus k sub 0 n minus 1 plus 2 times x sub n minus 2. So that's k1 n minus 2 squared plus k0 n minus 2. And all of that is equal to 4n. So now we've just got some algebra to work out. Again, what what is this? This is our method of undetermined coefficients. So maybe I should have written that in here. This is our method of undetermined coefficients. These are the undetermined coefficients, k1 and k0. Those are the things I'm trying to find for which this will be a solution. So that's my focus. When I'm working on these equations, I'm ultimately trying to figure out what k0 and k1 are. So let's go ahead and expand this out. I get a k1n squared plus a k0n minus and then I'm just going to do some expansions here. So I'm going to focus on this first bit. 
and that first bit becomes the square is n squared minus 2n plus 1, and so I've got a negative 3k1n squared, and then I've got a negative 3k1 times negative 2n, so that's a plus 6k1n, and then I've got a negative 3k1. And then I've also got the k naught, this term here now. k naught times n, and then that's multiplied by negative 3, so it's a negative 3 k naught n, and then plus a 3 k naught. And then we've got that for the other one as well. I'll just carry it on down here. So that's a plus 2 k 1 n squared minus a, so the part that I'm on right now is I'm looking at the middle term here, which is n times negative 2 and then another n times negative 2. So that's a negative 4n times k1 times 2. So negative 8k1n. And then the next term is the square of the 2, which is 4 times k1 times 2, so that's 8k1, so that's plus 8k1. And then I'm on this term, k0 times n times 2, so that's 2k0 n. And then the last term is negative 4k0, and that is equal to 4n. Next, what we do is we group in terms of n. So I may not have left myself enough room in these parentheses, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the form is. So that's what we're trying to do to the left-hand side. It's something times n squared. What are the terms that involve an n squared? There's a k1 n squared. There's a negative 3k1. And is there any more? Just can't, oh, there we are, a 2k1n squared. Oh, and that's neat because those add up to zero. It's actually not a coincidence that those add up to zero. Um, I'll let you think about why it's not a coincidence. How about the next one? With n, well, we've got a k0n, a 6k1n, negative 3 k naught n. So I'm just going to scan across and write all those ones down that I see. So k naught n plus 6 k 1 n minus 3 k naught n minus 8 k 1 n plus 2 k naught n. And what do those simplify down to? So I've got 2 k naught, negative 3 k naught, k naught, so the k naughts all cancel, and I'm just left with a negative 2k1 times n plus, and then we'll do the next line. Maybe I'll move this down just to indicate that we are working out the new line by reducing it. So I've done part of it, but not all of it yet. So how about the constant terms? So the constant terms are things that didn't involve the n squared or the n. So I just scan across. I see that there's one, there's one there's one, there's one, so those ones are the ones I'm writing down. So it's negative 3k1 plus 3k0 plus 8k1 and then a minus 4k0. I'm going to give myself a bit more room. Minus a 4k0. So that becomes then negative 3k1 plus 8k1 is a 5k1 3k0 minus 4k0 is a negative k0, and that is equal to 4n. So what I have is that these two expressions have to be equal for all values of n. So these are equal for all values of n, which means as polynomials they are equal. So that means that this has to equal that. And this constant term 
has to equal the constant term over here. but The constant term over there is 0. So we get that negative 2k1 is equal to 4 and 5k1 minus k0 is equal to 0. And so maybe I'll just indicate that. What is it we've done here? We've done that uh, these are equal as polynomials, so compare coefficients of n. They're equal as polynomials, so they, they got e equal for all n. They are polynomials. They're equal for all values of n, so they have to be the same polynomial, so we compare their coefficients. And that means then that k1 is equal to negative 2, and k0 is equal to 5 times k1, or negative 10. And so we have found our coefficients. So that means our particular solution is negative 2n squared minus 10n. So there is our particular solution. Now once we have our particular solution, we can go ahead and write down our general solution to the non-homogeneous recurrence relation. Our general solution is our general solution to the homogeneous plus the particular solution to the non-homogeneous. Our general solution to the homogeneous, we'll scroll back up, that was the c plus d times 2n. So we have a c plus d times 2 to the n plus our particular solution and again, it's a minus 2n squared minus 10n. So there is our general solution to the non-homogeneous recurrence relation. Again, what this means is for any sequence that satisfies this recurrence relation, that sequence has to be of this form. It's got to be of this form for some values of C and D. What the values of C and D determine are the initial conditions, or uh, the, the converse of that is the initial conditions determine the values of C and D. Do we have initial conditions here? Oh, actually, I even went a little bit further than we need to. It just said to find a particular solution. We were pretty much done here. But we went ahead and found the general solution anyway. There are no initial conditions given in the question. It didn't want us to go that far, so that's fine. If we were given initial conditions, we could go ahead and find C and D. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that our technique for finding the particular solution, you may say, well, we wanted to find the particular solution. Why did I go ahead and find the general solution to the homogeneous equation? Why didn't I just jump right into, well, let's find the particular solution using our method of undetermined coefficients? Well, if you remember, our first guess where we said, hey, the forcing function is a linear polynomial. So why don't I guess a solution of the form of a linear polynomial? Well, here I used the fact that the constant term was already a solution to the homogeneous equation. So it wasn't going to help me at all. So knowing the general solution of the homogeneous equation informed me as to what would have been a better guess for the non-homogeneous equation. All right, so that's our general technique for solving non-homogeneous recurrence relations. It works for order one, order two, it actually works for higher order recurrence relations as well. There we're just solving polynomials of degree more than two, but the same process works all the way through. Now if you want to see a couple more examples done, I've included those in the notes package. And in particular, what I've done in a couple of them is I've done this. I've said, you know, what happens if I don't pay attention to the homogeneous solution? And I just say, let's find a particular solution. And we go, okay, it's a linear polynomial. So I'm going to guess that the solution is of the form of a linear polynomial. What happens in that case if you just plug it in and chug away? So a uh, spoiler alert you waste a lot of time. <laughs> you know, you don't get anything new. And that's what you'll see 
in those worked out examples. You'll see that you do the calculation and what ends up happening down in the calculation down below here is a lot of stuff cancels and then you just lose the variable entirely. It goes away. So you miss it. And the reason you miss it is because, well, when you plug it in to the recurrence relation, it's going to return zero because you already know it's a homogeneous solution. Or at least if you knew the homogeneous solutions, then you would know it's, it's one of those. So that's just uh, the details of if you blindly go ahead and just guess at a particular solution without paying attention to the homogeneous solutions, what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is you just wait a lot, waste a lot of time doing calculations that aren't going to get you anywhere. And you can see the details of those. All right, so that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.